My name is Dr. Debrat Shom. I'm director of the Aesthetic Clinics and we have centers in multiple cities in India. The aesthetic industry is continuously growing. Today, the compounded annual growth rate of the aesthetic industry globally is about 40% year on year. The reason that this is growing is because disposable income is growing and people want to look as young as they feel. So as a result of which this industry is taking leaps and bounds, technology is growing at a rapid rate and India has followed the global standards in the same as well. And we are seeing the same explosion of the aesthetic industry in India as well as we've been seeing globally. I started my practice about 15 years ago. And 15 years ago, when I started my medical practice, at that moment, the only people who wanted to look younger or look more rejuvenated or fresher were the Bollywood or the Hollywood stars. Today, every Indian wants to look better. And that's the power of the internet. Today, every place in India has become aspirational. So as technology has grown, people have started to embrace the fact that they have only one life and they would like to look better during this particular life. So the entire industry has transformed significantly in India, where the working class and the middle class is actually a majority of our patients today, as opposed to the so-called celebrities. Within the aesthetic industry, the hair growth or the hair care industry is one of the major segments. In fact, in India, it is the biggest segment. We Indians have traditionally been very conservative. Many of us don't want to undergo cosmetic surgery to change our face. We've always been taught that we should be happy with whatever God has given us. But hair is something which everyone wants. And hair has traditionally been associated with India. Right from the initial coconut oil brands, everyone has been talking about long and lustrous hair. So therefore, the hair care industry has grown significantly in India. Today, I would say on my estimates, about 50% of the aesthetic industry is about hair. All those people who don't want to do a botulinum toxin injection or filler injection or cosmetic surgery procedures, all of us want better hair. So from that perspective, the hair care industry in India is growing by leaps and bounds. Globally also, they say that it's almost a $100 billion industry at this moment in time of hair growth and hair care. So hair care and hair growth have always been and will continue to be a major segment of the aesthetic industry as we move forwards. The challenges of the hair care industry have always been that there has never been any permanent solution for genetic hair loss. Most of the hair loss that we know is either genetic or it's hormonal. And the challenge has always been that surgeries, which are hair restoration or hair transplant surgery, cannot be done just once. Let me explain what happens. Suppose someone has lost hair from the front of the scalp. You could take hair from the back of the scalp and put it out here. But hair loss is a continuously progressive phenomenon. So at age 30, you may create the hairline, but at age 50, the entire thing right up till the vertex will empty out. So repeated hair transplants costs a lot of money. And those have been some of the problems that you're not able to really solve these problems on a long term basis. What is changing is, Regenerative medicine is coming through, like in other branches of medicine. And as regenerative medicine comes through, we are actually able to grow the dying hair, which is almost gone. And we can keep it on. It's like putting manure. You put a little bit of manure and it actually by drip irrigation and manure keeps the crops growing. So that is what is really changing. And that is the exciting bit that you can actually now grow hair without necessarily causing any sort of trauma to the scalp or having to remove scalp from the front back to put it in the front or to have to do it repeatedly. In my opinion, unless and until you grow her hair back such that she feels normal, you're not treating the person holistically. And this is where I have a slight divergence of view from the Indian policy makers. In Indian policy, we go ahead and look at every hair care patient or every hair growth patient as a consumer and put 18% GST because we think that this is a luxury item. In my opinion, the cancer survivor who's lost hair is not looking at luxury. They are just looking at confidence and they just want themselves to look like they were before. So I think the government should take a more holistic view of this and not charge these people GST because hair fall is also a mental and a medical problem. We actually started out on our journey in 2008. At that moment in time, I was working with the IIT Mumbai and the Tata Memorial Hospital. One of the big advantages that I had at my disposal was that we had a clinical practice where there were patients. 
We had the Tata Memorial Hospital, which had one of the best animal houses in the country so that we could do animal research. And then we had access to some of the best brains in the Indian Institute of Technology in Mumbai, which allowed us to actually invent molecules. We were not working on hair. We were actually working on finding a solution, a nanomolecule carboplatin, which is a type of drug for retinoblastoma and neuroblastoma, which affects children. While working on the, on the mice model for preparing these molecules, suddenly by serendipity, we started noticing that the mice model or the rats were actually losing hair in this particular area. One thing led to the other and slowly and steadily, we embarked on a totally different tangent of hair growth. Nanomolecule carboplatin, of course, that paper got published and it is now the standard of care for all retinoblastoma patients. But the tangent that life took us on or the universe took us on led us to actually develop the QR678. And the QR678 is actually the hallmark of regenerative medicine. The QR678 consists of six biomimetic growth factors which are produced from plants. So there are no real side effects. And the most important bit is the dying hair, which is the telogen and the catagen phase, gets converted into the living hair, which is the anagen phase. Since this has never happened before, it took us time, but since this has never happened before, this particular therapy has been granted a US patent, a patent from the United States Patent and Trademark Office, has been granted a patent by the Indian authorities, and is now regulatory approved in 10 plus countries, including the European Union and the UK. The QR678 is a small solution, which is administered to the scalp and it causes hair growth. Eight to 10 sessions are required, which are done at three weekly intervals so that you can actually grow hair. Some of the results are so fantastic that the 12 clinical trials that we've done, which have been published in the top American journals has led the American review boards and the editorial boards has left them wondering when we are going to launch the QR678 in the US. See, the big difference is in India, I think where we lack is we tend to publish papers and the publishing of the papers is something that we do because uh, you know it gives us pleasure in publishing papers. Americans do one thing very differently. The papers they publish, they actually go ahead and commercially productize the material. And this is possible because of all the large universities which are there in the US, where basic scientists work very closely with the clinical scientists to publish the papers but also to go ahead and give rise to a product which can then serve humanity. It makes America very powerful in terms of the money they generate, but it also makes America very powerful in terms of the transformative power of this type of research. In India, that is sometimes not possible. But what fell in place for us was the fact that we had an animal house at TMH, IIT, the basic scientists, and our clinical practice, thereby leveraging the benefits, which I had learned when I was doing my fellowship in the US and where I did my MBA, where I saw the benefits of multiple cross-disciplinary approach, which could lead to growth for mankind. The QR678 initially started out with being used at the aesthetic clinics, but how many people can one clinic chain start? So currently all this large skin and hair clinic chains in India and in 10 plus countries have been approached to distributors. The QR678 is available in 1000 plus clinics all across the world already. Now we are coming out with our own nutraceuticals because one of the major causes for hair fall is the fact that food today does not have what it needs to have. So the nutraceuticals are also getting patented. The shampoos and serums are getting patented. Ultimately, I see us having a QR678 hair suite so that the therapy can be done by the doctors, but you can also take care of your hair by using the right shampoos, by using the right serums in the night and having the right nutraceuticals which supplement the growth of hair, which our normal food is not able to give us these days.